Hi, I'm DJ Ware, and on this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be taking a look at BGFS right after this. So what is BGFS? It's, it's a parallel file system that was developed by the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany back in 2005. And it is getting a lot of attention lately in the high performance computing uh, world because of probably a lot of different th reasons. One is it seems to be getting more popular for use in, in HPC, but also because of the April 2019, uh, an image was released uh, of a black hole, the first image ever taken, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, it took over two years to produce this image, and it had to slog through four petabytes of data in order to do it. And that data came from a BGFS uh, file system. BGFS is open source. It's also POSIX compliant. It does use standard TCP IP uh, networks, either over Ethernet or RDMA. Uh, and that also scales based on the number of servers and based on the number of storage, uh, how many storage devices you have in the system. Uh, but it isn't just for HPC, it's, it's really meant for all uses where a lot of data is being stored and retrieved. Uh, generally, BGFS was developed to run on Linux, and it is meant to run in normal user space. The only exception to that is the client. That requires some system space, and so uh, they developed a, um, a uh, kernel module which gets installed at the time that the client is installed. Uh, the problem with a lot of the other um, parallel clustered file systems, uh, I won't mention any names, you can look it up, but they use Fuse, and Fuse has been known to be a bottleneck. Uh, BGFS supports many uh, Linux distributions, Red Hat, uh, it also, of course, supports CentOS, Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, uh, SUSE, OpenSUSE. And it runs on, on, on uh, standard uh, Intel or AMD X8664, so it needs a 64-bit architecture. There are binaries provided for that. If you're gonna run on ARM or on OpenPower, you will need to, re to compile the uh, installation uh, RPMs or, or, or uh, DEBs. Uh, it depends on our D packages, depending upon uh, which distribution you're going to be using. It is a simple architecture. It just has a, f a handful of components. It has a management service. It has an admin and a monitoring service. It has a client service. It has a metadata service. and has a storage service. So we'll talk more about those uh, uh, in detail. And the management service is the registry. So that contains a list of all the servers that are in, in deployed in the network as well as the kind of service that they are providing. The metadata service provides the data about the data. So it, it contains information about the permissions on that file, as well as the stripe, striping information about you know, where it's located in the storage pool. The storage service provides the distributed files and the support for images, images being in terms of virtual machines or Docker images. The client service mounts that file system and makes it available to the users. Uh, the admin server gives you a, a GUI, uh, the administrators to a GUI where they can go in and monitor the performance of different aspects. You can monitor uh, the performance of the metadata servers or the storage servers or even the client server if you want. Uh, you can also change the configuration and tune it from there uh, as well as look at logs and look at errors that might be occurring in the system. There's a, also a thing called Beyond or BGFS On Demand, uh, and that's really a, a, a meant to solve a problem with computing nodes. And compute nodes have a special problem. Most of them have their own local storage systems that they use, and it's usually very high speed NVMe, or it might just be SSDs, but usually it's NVMe, and they're usually in a RAID 1. That stores the OS, and it stores the applications as well. The problem is that computing nodes need data, and, of course, and the data they need usually has to be shared. And of course, a local file system isn't going to have shared data from the other computing nodes. So what, what, in the past, what people have done is they just mount the, 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 uh, the parallel clustered file system onto the computing nodes, 
and then create a shared uh, directory for them to store their temporary files in. And that's not good because <laughs> then, your, then your compute nodes are impacting your storage network and you're not taking advantage of that high-speed disk that those machines have. And so what Beyond does is it allows the, uh, a, a temporary storage pool to be created on the cluster nodes uh, using the local high-speed disk that can be shared with the other compute nodes. And that only exists for the execution of the app. Once the app is done, that shared file storage disappears. Uh, it also uh, has uh, some requirements for the type of, of Linux, of course, that needs uh, RHEL or CentOS 7. I don't know of any uh, information they've published yet for 8, version 8, of course, and CentOS doesn't have version 8 yet. Uh, Debian and Ubuntu, Stretch or Bionic uh, releases for that. Uh, you know, they're trying to support the LTS versions of the operating systems, of course. And so uh, uh, Sluice or OpenSUSE, uh, Tumbleweed, I think, is the latest versions I've seen for that. Uh, you can install an evaluation system on a single box with a single drive, and you can see how the system is put together and how to configure it, how to test it, how it actually works. And, it, it, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, a typical production system, however, would have two SSDs in a RAID 1 on the metadata servers. It would have between two and eight uh, disk drives, either spinning rust or SSDs on the, each one of the storage pools or storage servers. And then it would have a fast network connection, either 10 gig or, or InfiniBand or Rocky uh, in order to provide a connection between those servers. You can use one gigabit, uh, however, just be aware you are going to be hitting just like you do in any 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 uh, clustered uh, storage system. You're going to be hitting that one gig network performance bottleneck pretty early on. Uh, the storage server needs four gig of memory, and then it needs one gig of RAM for every attached device. Uh, if you're if you're using uh, SATA and, and not SAS then they recommend at least eight drives per storage server in order to get the performance up to an equivalent SAS. The metadata, no special requirements. You, you know, your, your load is going to determine that. And so that's why the admon tool is pretty handy, uh, unless you know the formulas ahead of time, and I don't. Uh, so I, I'm going to be working my way through that. So uh, the client, again, no special requirements, and, but other than the kernel needs to be at least 2.6.18. Uh, management service, again, no special requirements. It is dependent on the number of, of systems in the, uh, in the uh, cluster. Admon daemon, that does get pretty chatty with the CPU. It's a Java app, and so Java apps usually hit the CPUs pretty hard when there's a lot of activity going on. So if you're, if you're, doing, uh, if you're monitoring the storage pools, and you're monitoring the meta servers, and you're monitoring uh, the client system, the client server, then you're probably going to be jumping that CPU up pretty significantly, and you'll want to make sure you take it, take note of that. As far as memory requirements, uh, there's no special ones there at all. For the monitor daemon, the only the only requirement there is for the storage, and that is based on what you're monitoring, how long you're going to keep it. So why don't we take a look at it, and uh, let me switch this over. Uh, into uh, demo mode and I'll get rid of this and that and uh, I have a clone that's already up and running here that I just closed I think and so we'll bring that back up and I wish I was running this on an Odroid I'm not I'm running this on a this is an Intel 6700k uh, as obviously it's a four core processor um, so that's what we're going to, and this is a, a virtual box uh, running under Fedora 30. So what we're going to do is I've created a number of scripts here, and I'll, and I'll kind of go through that with you uh, as to what we're going to do. So the first thing this script is going to do is disable SE Linux. And so that's what it's going to do. And then it's going to attach the repo that has the BGFS uh, RPMs in it. So let's go ahead and run that. And our repo is down, and I will check. J 
check the config and make sure it's disabled. And then I don't need a reboot. So do I just need to reboot? So we'll reboot the system so that we uh, get back into SE Linux disabled. And so you have to reboot between that, between setting that. And by the way, don't misspell disabled. I did that once. <laughs> it's really, a, it's really kind of tough getting back in because the kernel doesn't even start. Now you know why I cloned it, right? <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> okay. And then what I'll do is once I get back into a. Just wants to shove it all the way over, doesn't it? Okay. I'm I'm not a big fan of VirtualBox, uh, but for this, it, it's fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a a yum update. Make sure that I'm current. Oh, yeah, that might help. Yep, I just want to do a yum update. Make sure I'm current in all the packages. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be a problem unless they've snuck one in in the past 24 hours, and that would be unusual for CentOS. Um, so the next step is to install the packages, and I have uh, a number of them I'm going to install. This is the this is the management service. This one is the meta service. Um, obviously the storage one and then the client and then the admin service so we'll go ahead and get those started uh, one thing I need to check though before I start that I think I changed this earlier I just want to make sure since we're running under root I have to even though we're running on a local host, it's still going to use the connection. So let me just make sure that I have, yes, permit root. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I had permit root enabled. And off to the races we go. I should have put yeses after these, so it's going to stop, but that's okay. You can see all the stuff it's going to install. So I'm putting this all on one virtual machine. I'm going to stack it all up on one. Uh, normally you wouldn't do this, but for today, we don't care. And this is the last one. So that's not too bad, right? So then the next thing we need to do is we actually need to configure this. And so I'll bring this up so you can see that. Uh, what, it, what it needs to have is the management daemon needs to know where to store its, its, infer, its metadata. And so we're going to tell it to use data, BGFS. That's all we need to tell it. The Manda server, uh, similar, in it, but it needs to know the host name for the metadata server. And then the storage pool, it needs to know what we're mounting. And so uh, it, one thing I didn't show you is where we put the mount and whether or not it actually did it. Yes, it did. So this is my second drive uh, that I configured into the virtual machine and I've mounted on the, on the slash server drive, our service drive, which seems appropriate to me uh, for this anyway. And then finally, uh, the client needs to know where to find its client service and so that'll be on the local host so with that i think we're ready to go with that mm, that's fairly quick i'm just going to make sure it didn't have any errors though looks like everything is happy Everything is happy. So the next thing we need to do is we'll need to make sure that our um, configuration is correct. And so they're in the Etsy. The, 
there is the config files for all of these. And so the ones we want to look at is the uh, what we want the meta one I believe that's one of the ones let's see uh, nope that one looks fine so let's see I'll just go check them all. That's the guy. I don't know why. I, we passed it to him. I don't know why he did not pick that up, but he doesn't. So if you notice down here, it didn't pick up the local host. So we'll type that in. Might be a bug, but we did pass that to him when we did it. And then the other one to check. Now the client one has just a base information in it. Um, the actual mounts are stored here. So these will be where it, uh, where the client is going to mount the file system and make it available to the, to, the, uh, to the users. And so we can check and see what it's actually going to use. And it's going to use slash mount slash PGFS. And I think that, that's fine. And that's fine. It's perfectly fine. And then it links to the, the, the client config. So I think we're all set here and we're ready to do a start. And I guess I should show you what I'm starting. And I'll put these scripts up on, uh, on my uh, GitHub page with a link in, in the video below. So if you want to use mine, you can. If you want to use your own, that's fine. Um, so yep, that's all we need. And we'll do a start. And hopefully if we've covered all the bases and didn't get sloppy. And I, I also have a status script to make sure that all of those are up and running since sometimes system control fails silently. Yeah, it's doing the client and that takes a while because remember the client has to go actually create a, uh, a uh, module for the kernel, so it has to compile that. So this takes a bit. So let's take a look. Looks like we're good. Let's see if we have a mount on. Oops. If I can type. Yes. So the client did install, and that is good. That's goodness. So the next thing we can do is we can actually run. And I don't think I have a. I don't think I actually have a. Bear with me a moment. Uh, so I did not create that in order to la launch the admin jar. So what we'll do is I will just log in. Looks like it's on 118. And what we'll do is, so it, it, see it's a, jo a Java file and it's in opt. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start that. And then it, and it's gonna stop and say, okay, uh, this is where I'm gonna set it. Uh, it's localhost, port 8000, gonna give you a, 2K by 2K screen, and we'll do log level threes, language English. And the def this is the screen for this, and the password is admin by default. 
if you're going to run this for any length of time, please go change that. <laughs> so, so this is your admin console, and uh, in here it will have uh, an overview of the uh, of the metadata nodes. This is the I only have one, so only one storage node shows up. I'm going to leave that one there, uh, and then of course we we don't have any data coming in yet, but once we do, uh, once we create some IOs, then these graphs will change. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to leave this here, and then we will take this down a little bit. I don't need a, I don't need this covering the full screen. I think I can make that visible. Let's make it a little bit bigger so that we can see the graph. Okay, so what I'm going to do Uh, I'm going to run file, so I'm going to go over here to mount. I'm in my client directory, and then I have um, I have some shell scripts, I think, somewhere. Nope. I will go get them. Oops, that's not the right place. These are the ones that I usually create benchmarks with uh, for uh, Gluster. So it's the same. I'm not. I'm not expecting any craziness, but you never know. Let me. Uh, yeah. Oh. What are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so these are the scripts that I normally use for uh, benchmarking uh, uh, any changes that I make to Cluster. So Cluster is currently what I'm currently using, but I am really thinking about moving over to this. So I will probably be doing uh, the compile in order to do that. So I'll let you know and maybe come back and show you a production system. So. Let me just do something real basic. We'll do a file. Well, first of all, let me make sure I have file in here. This will take a minute because there's usually quite a bit in there. And let me then go over to the mount directory. And then I'll do a I'll write it first. So this is a just a sequential workload. Uh, 500 meg uh, drive that it uh, that it's gonna a no, 500 meg file it's gonna create. Uh, and then it's going to do that a number of times, and uh, we'll get a read rate out of it. Now that's pretty close. This is running off of a of a NVMe drive. Oh no, off of an SSD drive, a flash drive. And so this is pretty close. It's an older Samsung 840, I think. And uh, so yeah, that's pretty close to the drive speed. That, but then, so it, BGFS is not really adding a whole lot of overhead to it, and by the way, we got a graph here that shows what the throughput rate was, and you can see that eh, it was a little bit, a little bit crunchy, a little, a little chunky. But we'll try a read since we've created the file now, and we'll see how that goes. It's pretty close to the drive speed, so it has this has a little bit more overhead. Uh, and so it is a little slower than the drive speed, but not a whole lot. I'd say about 12%, maybe 15% less, something like that. Um, 
Yeah, so it works. I mean, I'm able to create files in the file system. Uh, I <laughs> just <laughs> just created one, but let's try, uh, maybe let's try a little bit bigger example. I have one that's a, a full, that's a gig. Uh, I think that is, well, I have to do a WB, I think. Been a while since I've run these, yep. So this is gonna create the file. This is a, yeah, it is a gig. Actually, it's, it might be bigger than that. It might be two gig. We'll check, we'll check it. We'll see what it wrote when it's done. It is one gig. So the, again, it was pretty close to the same. Uh, if I'm looking at this, and so let's do a read on it. I'll just take that out and put a B. <clears throat> and this is going to turn right around and read the same size file. I'm thinking it's probably going to be pretty close to what it was. No, it shot up. Wow, there was a huge spike there in performance. <laughs> and then it dropped off. Yeah, that dropped back down. Well, that was, that's probably the cache. I'm guessing that's probably the cache. Interesting. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Uh, and uh, BGFS is, uh, is, I mean, from what I have seen of it, I'll, uh, one thing I probably should do here is, I know this isn't here, so let me put this out. I think it's not here. Nope. Let's just see uh, how the load is on the system. And we'll give it something to do. up the system if at all using about 1.3 gig of memory and I know that CentOS normally out of the box will take about 500 meg so it's not adding a whole lot and the processors it's just that they're idle it's not doing anything it's sleeping about six to nine eight percent yeah Very nice. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. Um, and again, as always, hope to see you again real soon. Bye for now.